It's the first decade of the 20th century, and the country is at the height of a transportation revolution. Previously, people could only go as fast as the wind or their feet or maybe their horse would take them. Now, the fact that you could put an engine on almost anything meant Americans in particular had a whole lot of space they could cover a whole lot faster. And the red-hot motorcycle is at the forefront of innovations in speed and power. By 1907, Indian's show-stopping V-twin engine has raised the bar for the entire industry. Competition is generally just a good thing. It's a good thing for consumers. It tends to lower prices. It's also a good thing when it comes to innovation. Harley-Davidson knows they can't compete with Indian on speed, so they tackle another issue plaguing motorcycles of the day, the bone-jarring turbulence. I personally cannot imagine that it was a lot of fun riding first-generation motorcycles. It would have been driving 35, 40 miles an hour on a road that was inconsistent, that was unpredictable. After negotiating a rough patch of Wisconsin road, Harley has a moment of clarity. He's not sure how he is going to fix the problem. It turns out somebody already has. Harley is able to buy the parts he needs through another company and integrates them into the frame to improve the motorcycle's suspension. So as you hit bumps, that front wheel would absorb some things a little bit, made it a little bit more comfortable for the rider, made it a little more stable and safer on the road as well. Look here. Catskills to New York City. Endurance race. Biggest race of the year. All of New York press is going to be there. Since Harley had started out as trying to build a, a, a more rugged bike for everyone, it only made sense not to enter some speed trial, but instead they would enter it into an endurance race. Indian is sponsoring one of those riders. I guarantee it. Not one of them, 16 of them. Well, what can we afford? We can probably afford to finance one. Well, that rider is going to be me. Indian was the top dog. No one knew what Harley Davidson was. If they won, this would be a game changer for their brand. The new Indian motorcycle will revolutionize the motorcycle industry. There's a lot of new things we're coming out with at the moment. The number one thing is that. Mr. Hendy? Yes? I wanted to introduce myself. Name's Davidson. Arthur Davidson. Oh, Harley Davidson. Glad you boys made it out. How many riders do you have? Well, uh, one. Listen, son, my advice. It's not whether you win or lose. It's about showing up and having fun. With all due respect, sir, we plan to win this race. Imagine riding this motorcycle over uneven terrain, rugged terrain, uphills, downhills, through backwoods.
that's a testament to the quality of this particular vehicle. It's two days of hell. Over 350 grueling miles, Walter Davidson battles back and forth with the other riders. His sturdy workhorse with upgraded suspension has kept pace with the faster, flashier Indian. Down the final stretch, battered and exhausted, it's going to be close. After a grueling two-day, 350-mile endurance race, from the Catskill Mountains to New York City, Walter Davidson crosses the finish line in first place. For George Hendy, an Indian, it's a wake-up call. Harley Davidson has arrived. Their business starts to take off. They double the size of their factory, hire 35 new employees, and increase production to 1,000 motorcycles a year. And in a stroke of genius, Davidson talks his way into an untapped market that will fortify their business even more. Police forces embrace the motorcycle because of its handling. And the city of Detroit, Michigan becomes the first municipality to place a larger scale order for police motorcycles. But while Harley Davidson may be growing rapidly, they're still far behind industry titan Indian. And it's not long before a revolutionary new machine will become a huge threat to both of their businesses. The Model T came out in 1908. It was a lot cheaper than the other cars of the day, and that was a challenge to the motorcycle industry. A car was much safer, more practical, you could put your whole family in it. As the assembly line ramps up, the price of a Model T plummets. It's now about the same cost as a top-of-the-line motorcycle. But Harley-Davidson has a plan to stay competitive and it has nothing to do with bike technology. Harley-Davidson created a product line of things like gloves and hats and jackets and saddlebags, a lifestyle around their motorcycle. It's a brilliant marketing move. This was, this type of man rides a car, this type of man rides a motorcycle. So the man that drove the car was a family man very often, but the guy that rode a motorcycle was the cool guy in the motorcycle jackets. And thanks in part to its vast dealer network, motorcycle clubs spring up all over the country. People love a vibe and they love an image. And you become a band of brothers when, when You've got this love for a motorcycle, and, and, and everybody shares that same passion. Harley-Davidson was really ahead of its time, creating a whole subculture around it, creating a certain kind of vibe around it. Harley-Davidson uh, did that way back in the day before there was a playbook and the internet to really bring that forward. The motorcycle becomes a kind of symbol of something more raw and elemental, and its riders are seen as more rebellious and living life to its fullest.